Down the street, style journalist and bespoke savant James Sherwood wants to blow the tailor's trumpet for them. He believes their history is their greatest marketing tool. He's talked the tailors into putting it on display. He's after the ancient order books, gathering dust up and down the street. Once again looking for Duff Cooper. I've been asked to curate an exhibition of Savile Row Bespoke at the Palazzo Pisi in Florence. I'm getting quite messianic about Savile Row, to say the least. You know, very protective. This is probably heavier than I am. I don't know why I'm protective, because an outsider who falls in love with it, because I'm not really in the business, you know, I'm not a tailor. Being dead doesn't stop your being of interest down here. The tailors keep records of every garment ordered, every bill paid and otherwise. Rudolf Valentino's dress. Oh, my God. Sorry, Jacques Vartelier. Oh, good. Let's see where he lived. It's going to be grand, isn't it? I would have thought. Jacques Cartier is dorking so <laughs> I thought it was going to be a class of Vendôme or something. It's much more exciting when you say you have Fred Astaire or Edward VII in your, in, in your order books rather than Puff Daddy or Damon Dash. Winston S. Churchill, 497. Winston no, no. Churchill, the Lincoln Park, Park Gardens. When you think about Churchill, it was hardly a fashion place, but um, it's one of his vices, clearly. Having tailoring is a vice. <laughs> Next door at Norton and Sons, Patrick Grant is also on the Churchill case. These are from the Churchill archives. We have this order. We, in fact, it's a list of everything that was bought by Churchill. White cashmere racing breeches, a pink satin racing cap, um, chocolate satin racing jacket with pink sleeves. This was, this was the slim sporting military Churchill um, before he put on a bit of weight and went next door. Poole and company are so old, they're a bit blasé about their history. In the basement boiler room, kings and commoners share shelf space with mouse traps and cleaning products. Two 19th century clients are causing problems. I think it would be under French, not in the French. But we, the French. The French. And that would have Eugenie in it. Yeah. Can you Napoleon III and Princess Eugenie probably aren't missing. They've just been mislaid, temporarily, for 50 years or so. She could be under M for Eugenie de Mojito. So we're now looking under FR. Yeah. Well, of course, there's Major General French. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, we've tried emperor, but, but there's so many emperors. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think we'd better look under under in now. OK. Let's try it. Let's try up here. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. <laughs> so the exchange is the way to jump. It is very complicated. I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, well done, that's it. Yep, well done, Keith. So all we've got to do is get you out the corner now, haven't we? Um, yeah, there must be a bit of way. Isn't it? Prince of Wales. Oh, you've got him? Yeah. It's a fantastic yeah, so, so we've got somewhere. <laughs> There's, that's when he came to us, 1846. Yeah. Prince and then Emperor. Yes. And then dead. <laughs> <laughs>